Howdy folks, let's transfer some ether. One way that we can look at actually using a smart contract to send some tokens back and forth. Sometimes you hear the concept of programmable money as a way to describe uh, blockchains. Uh, so let's have a look at some of this that we can do right now. So just inside my contract here, uh, we're going to create a new function and what we're going to do is we're going to just send some ether into the contract So I'm just going to create a new function here. I'm going to call it Donate so the idea being that anybody that knows the contract address can just send some ether to this contract and it will accumulate um, You know, perhaps this is for a charity or something where you're raising funds so this needs to be external so that it can be reached. And there's a new key keyword here, which is payable that we're going to have. And actually I can just leave this empty for the moment here. And let's see what happens. So I'm going to deploy my contract. And I'm going to have a look at my function. So we had get Jeff and hello from before. And now I have a donate. And this one is in red and it says transact, it's payable. So once the contract has been deployed, what I can then do is select one of my accounts. So let's select this account here. And I can choose a value. So let's choose 222. And then I can go ahead and click donate and then I can look at what happened here. And so the value that I sent, we can see is 222 way. And I can call this again, I can give it a new value. Let's give it a much bigger number, 5,555. And I can call donate, have a look. And there's the value. Now that was just the value of that previous transaction. So first I had to deploy the contract and then I've called the donate function twice. And this ether or these small amounts of way are just building up or accumulating in the contract. Okay, so an obvious next thing to do would be to be able to see how much ether has accumulated in a contract. You want to be able to check in on this. So one thing that you could have typed is something like this. So you want to return at every time the donate is called, you can return its balance. So just so that we can see how much is in there, how uh, you might not actually want to return this, but uh, just for our purposes, that's fine. Um, address refers in this case to this contract that we are working on right now. And so we're going to use the keyword this. So this no longer works. And in Ethereum now, what we have to do is we have to say we're returning uh, this dot balance and we have to cast it as an address. So this is how we want to be able to output the balance of a contract. So I'll just say here, output contract balance. Um, the other thing is that if we're returning something, then I have to modify my function. So instead of an external payable, I am going to return an integer of that function. So let's have a look at this one. I will delete my contract. I will, let's clear the output. I will redeploy. I will have a look. Let's donate. And then I want to see where this balance got returned. So I'm going to look at the transaction. And we can see here the decoded output says 222, but also the value says 222. So I might not be sure which one it is. So let's do another donation from the same person. And let's have a look now. And we can see the difference, the value is the value that was attached with the transaction. And the output now is my return statement, 
showing me the contract balance. And where did it go? So my output, 5777, is the return statement showing the contract balance. Now, when everybody is sending Ether to this contract, you might not want all of them to be able to see the ongoing or cumulative balance. So what we can do is we can write another function. Uh, so let's just call it get balance and we'll just make this one external read only and it's going to return a number showing us the balance. And all I'm gonna do is remove this return statement down here. We no longer output the balance there. So we have a parse error. We are expecting nothing and we got returning a U int. And I just forgot an S. So let's have a look at this now. So let's clear some output and deploy this contract. And we have a look. And now I have a get balance function. So these are nice and color coded in Remix. So the get balance and the hello, these are read only. These are in blue. Uh, the get Jeff is updating the state. It's in yellow. And then the payable function is in red. So let's do a quick test here. 444, donate get balance there it is 444 let's do another one donate and get balance and it's now updated uh, to 999 way i can look at this down here as well it's in the decoded output so a note on some of these numbers that we've been using the value in this box that I'm sending, I can make this quite big. I can say something like this. I didn't count how much that was, but I can donate that, get my balance. The balance has gone up by a lot. I can have a look at my account, and my account hasn't gone down by much compared to the original 100 Ether that it was in. And that's because of the units. So the value of the transaction is always in way. So the value is always in the smallest possible unit. And we have some other, we have Gue, Finny, and Ether. So Wei is named after Wei Dai. He is the author of the B Money Paper. So you can go have a look at that. An early proposal created by Wei Dai for an anonymous distributed electronic cash system. And it was referenced in the Bitcoin paper. Next up we have G-Way or Gui, and this is for giga or 10 to the power nine way. So we're getting huge, nine orders of magnitude bigger than the smallest unit. And then we have Finny after Hal Finney and Ether. So in read the docs here, we can see the standard units and it asserts that one way actually does equal one. And if you want bigger numbers, you can type one E12, one E15, one E18 for one whole Ether. So if I were to count all of these numbers, there should be 18 decimal places behind one ether. And here in Investopedia, we can see some of the names uh, that at least have been proposed. Not too many people actually use these names, although because it's in Remix, I think more and more people will be using the GUI and the Finny and the ether. So to recap this payable function, when the donate function is called, remember this is somebody or some contract outside that's calling this. What's happening is you're attaching a value to the call and that value is being sent into this contract. So when this function is called, real ether is sent along with it. And we know this because there is this value that goes along with it. We also know it because in our transactions, in the output, we see that there is a value. So that previous one donated 555. 
So every time it's called, a value gets sent with it. If we call it with no value attached with it, what do we want? Donate. Then we still burn a transaction, but nothing has actually been transferred.